Hi, this is Daryl Webster from Smart Stuff, and we're going to look at the new contact card in Outlook 2013. Some of you have said that the new contact card is difficult to use, and that you're used to using the full contact card, which gives you all the fields and places that you can enter notes. Some of you are using the full contact card as a CRM, and you're keeping notes and attachments within here, and you want to be able to access that quickly and easily. So when Outlook 2013 starts up for the first time, it goes straight into the People view, and it's a different view that I'll explain a bit later. Uh, but just to point out that when you have the contact card, sometimes you might have multiple contact cards for the same person, that some of the services will capture other information. So I've got two contact cards here. I've got one for Malcolm and Link. So Link has recorded a separate contact card for Malcolm based on uh, the conversations that I've had with him and Link. And I've also got this other card that we've compiled other information for. So the advantage of the People card well, there's two things that I'd like to point out about it. One thing is that it brings the information together from multiple sources. So you've seen that I've got two cards there for Malcolm, and there's a couple of other places that I'm connected with Malcolm too. I'm connected with him in LinkedIn, and I'm also connected with him using our own internal SharePoint. Um, and if that's SharePoint Online, then that might be SharePoint Social. The other point about the new contact card is that it gives quick access to the most frequently used contact information and different communication methods. So let's find Malcolm. So just using the search box there, I can quickly get to Malcolm, and I can open up his contact card. And here's a picture of the different sources of information where I'm getting contact information for Malcolm. So I've got an Outlook contact card, which is the full card that we saw earlier, and I've got two link cards, partly because I've got two link folders, which I imported earlier. There's a LinkedIn profile, so I've connected Outlook to LinkedIn as a social network, and as I said, that we've got a connection there to SharePoint. So each of these sources are hyperlinked, and I can open up the full contact card for Malcolm just by clicking on that hyperlink. So now look at that, look at that contact card in context. I'm going to go back over to email, and I've got a message here from from Malcolm. I can see from Link that he is away at the moment. And if I hover over his name, I get the little pop-up there with the different communication methods. I could start an IM, I could make a phone call to him. Here at Olympic, we've got um, Link as our PABX, so I've got the options to call him on his mobile, home, work, etc. Um, for those of you using Link online, you'll have the ability to make a Link call, or I could make a video call and send an email. But just to expand that contact card, now I get that full view again of some of the more commonly used information to contact Mal. So I can look up his work number, I could call his work number from clicking on that link. I could start an IM conversation from clicking on that URL there too. I could schedule a meeting. So all this information is, is there and available from the new contact card wherever it's been presented in the Microsoft applications and services. So you'll see the contact card is also available within SharePoint Online. If you hover over a document and you see that Malcolm was the last person to modify it or it's checked out to him, then you'll get this contact card again. And you can make a, a quick call or a quick instant message to see if that um, document is available now to be used or something like that. So when people say that they don't like the new contact card because they have to um, click a few extra clicks to um, get to the full contact card, it's really not that difficult. That Once you open up the contact card, you can click on the view source and you can see it's an Outlook and in the contacts folder. And you can quite easily open up that full contact card and get to all the additional information that you might have added if you're using it as a basic CRM tool. And how easy is it to add additional information to the new contact card? We'll hover over here and we'll open up the contact card again. We're going to edit the card. And we can quite easily add other information. I'm going to add a second work number. And that's done. Now that's going to be saved into the Outlook contact card. 
open the source and it's going to be available uh, from the full contact card if I wanted to look it up. So there's a second work number. There's the second work number that I just entered. If we didn't have the new contact card bringing together all these sources of information, then we'd have to look up all these separate contact cards that are within different contact folders. So I've got a contacts folder, I've got a LinkedIn folder, I've got a... there's Malcolm there. So again, you've just seen the, the whole view of Malcolm pulling together all the sources from within the LinkedIn folder. Link contacts. And I've changed this one over to the business card view, but back over to the people view. Malcolm there. Again, it's pulling through all those sources. But if I looked at the business card view and found Malcolm, and I open up just the contact card, then that's only reflecting the information that's within Link. Just the Link contact card. So you've learned two things. You've learned that the different sources are pulled together on the new contact card and they're easy to get to by clicking on the hyperlink of the, of the contact. And you've also found that it gives access to the most frequently used information and different contact methods. Then we'll just do it again. Different sources, different contact methods, easy to edit, other information.